In this video, we will discuss exponential functions and listen to their effect on certain parts of a synthesizer. When we hear the word exponential used in a mathematics class, the examples we hear about are a population growing exponentially, like in world population or in the spread of a virus, exponential growth of an investment account, or exponential decay of radioactive material after a nuclear accident. These are excellent examples, but most of us at a young age do not have a frame of reference for some of them. So, the goal with this video is to take an audio approach to understanding the exponential function, and we will also make a comparison between the exponential and linear function to have a better understanding of their difference. When we look at an exponential growth curve going from left to right, it starts shallow, and then at some point it really starts to take off. And with an exponential decay curve, it has a sharp decrease that then becomes shallow as we follow it to the right. We can notice this with volume on an amplifier. In this audio example, I have a sine wave being run into an amplifier, and one exponential function is controlling the amount of volume increase, and another exponential function is controlling the volume decrease. In the graph of this combined function, you can see what looks like an exponential growth and decay function joined together at a peak. I'll apply the exponential growth and decay function on pitch of the sine wave, and we can notice again how there is a slight rise to the pitch, and then as time goes on, the pitch increase becomes very fast, and immediately afterward, the pitch decreases again. As a comparison, I'll change the function from exponential to linear. Let's see if we can notice a difference. One difference we can notice is that it seems like the effect lasts longer. What is really happening is that we notice the linear effect much sooner. In fact, if you compare the graph for a linear function like y equal x plus 1 to the graph of an exponential function like y equal 2 to the x for x greater than or equal to 0, you'll notice that the linear function is above the exponential function for a little bit, and this is why we are noticing the linear effect sooner. The other difference is how long it takes to reach the highest pitch. The limit to human hearing is 20,000 Hz. Both functions take the pitch to above that limit, but the linear function takes more time to reach the highest pitch, and so then spends more time above human hearing. We can see these differences take shape on the oscilloscope. It turns out that exponential decay on volume is something that happens with acoustic instruments. When a piano string is struck by the hammer of a key, the initial sound is loud, but then the amplitude of the vibration of the string decreases exponentially. A typical piano string has a decay half time of about 0.4 seconds, which means that the amplitude of the vibrations decreases by half every 0.4 seconds. The exponential function is also important in our understanding of instrument tuning. The tuning system called equal temperament has been used in many cultures and has been known for a long time. But in the last couple centuries, it has been the most prominent and popular system for music. The idea with equal temperament is to have equally spaced notes to make up the octave. If you know middle C on a piano, then there is another C an octave above, and another an octave above that, and also octaves going below middle C. When we consider the frequency of a note, if we increase to the next octave above, then we are doubling the frequency. If we decrease to the next octave below, then we are cutting the frequency in half. So for example, middle C has a frequency of 262 hertz, and the C an octave above has frequency 524 hertz. It takes 12 notes to go up note by note from any one note to an octave above. Equal temperament bases the tuning of all notes off of the tuning of A above middle C, which has frequency 440 Hz. With this foundation, the frequency for any other note can be found with the following formula, which uses an exponential function. Frequency equal to 440 times 2 raised to the power note number divided by 12. 
where note number is the number of notes from A equal 440 hertz, which has note number zero. For notes above A equal to 440 hertz, the note number is positive, whereas for notes below, the note number is negative. Here are some examples. First, the A an octave above A equal 440 hertz has note number 12. By the formula, the frequency is 440 times 2 raised to the power 12 divided by 12, which is equal to 440 times 2, which is 880 hertz. As another example, the C more than an octave below A equal to 440 hertz has note number negative 21. By the formula, the frequency is 440 times 2 raised to the power negative 21 divided by 12, which ends up being equal to 130.812 hertz. This exponential tuning method extends to the analog synthesizer, which converts voltage into octaves by way of an exponential function. It takes one volt of control voltage to change a note by an octave, which also means doubling the frequency to go up or dividing its frequency in half to go an octave down. This uses a similar formula as we just saw, since it still depends on powers of two. The functions that control output on an analog synthesizer use a lot of exponential functions. This is by design to mimic what happens naturally with sounds and how we hear them. Here is a graph of a typical function that has an attack stage for when the sound starts, a decay stage to come down to a sustain level, and then a release stage to finish the sound. You can see that there are curves to these stages which are related to exponential functions. Here are some of these functions at work to produce some synthesized sounds. <laughs> 